celebrate what Jesus and God has done in your lives right now. It's time, it's time to thank him for what he's done in our lives and look forward to the great things he's going to do in our lives, right? That's right. Thank you, men. Thank you, men, for coming back for another time to our monthly men's breakfast right now. We want to welcome you all. A lot of you guys have come. A lot of you guys have been to the mountain. How you doing? You steadfast? Staying strong? Staying strong? That's right. Resisting the enemy? Resisting the charge to speak back at somebody? Stone wall. Over here. Over there. Over here. All right. Stone wall four down. Thank you, Pastor Eric, for that sharing that up there with us. Yes. Wow. Phew. Hmm. Ha. Huh. Well, guess who's back in the house here today? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I would say stand up, but you could sit, Pastor Angel. You could just, I know everybody's already said hi to him. Uh, you don't know what it means to us to have our fearless leader. And I mean fearless because he is fearless. Amen. You know, he goes to battle for every one of us. I know he prays your names, all your names, at different times during the day and nights. He has us covered. He is our covering. God is our full covering. We come under Pastor Angel's covering here. He is our shepherd. We're just going to honor you, Pastor Angel. Let's welcome back. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for the healing that's going on in Pastor Angel's life right now, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord God, that right now you're speaking to this infirmity right here in his, in his ankle, Lord God. We speak supernatural healing to it right now, Lord God. Full restoration, Lord God, that the pain will be gone right now in Jesus' name, Lord God. From the bottom of this foot, Lord God, and the bottom of this foot, Lord God, all the way to the top of his head, Heavenly Father, that he is supernaturally healed, Lord God. We thank you for that new heart that you put in him, Lord God, that new valve, Lord God. But it's not just a valve. It's a whole brand new heart that's in there, Lord God. We thank you for that, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for the impartation that's been taking place in his body, Lord God. The healing that's been gone in him, Lord God. I thank you for this man of God, Lord. I just thank you for what you've done in his life, Lord God, and what you've done in our lives that's caused us all to take another step of faith into the next level that we need to become, Lord God, so we can become the men of God that you've called us to become, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Lord, as iron sharpens iron, Lord God. We're here to hear from you, Heavenly Father, Lord God. We're here to sharpen our brothers, to encourage our brothers. We're here to do what we need to do is to become the men of God you need us to be, Heavenly Father, so that we can become all you've called us to be in our household. Our households, our wives will line up, our children will line up, our grandchildren will line up, and great-grandchildren, if there's any of them out there, Lord God, that from this day forth and from that time, Lord, that we made this conscious decision to change. We did a repent, Lord God, and we lined up with you now, Heavenly Father. And we're going your direction, Lord God, in your ways, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that. And generations are being changed because of what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. I thank you for that, Heavenly Father. I just know that you've, you're working, Lord, and you work behind the scenes, Lord God, on our behalf, Lord. As we get up there and do our part, Heavenly Father, you do your part for the rest of us, Lord God. We thank you for it, Heavenly Father, Lord God. We thank you for this time, Lord God, to come together as men to praise and worship you, Lord God, and we give you praise and glory and honor, and we thank you for this time. As we stand to our feet and get ready to worship right now, we're going to worship the King, Lord God. We're going to worship you, Lord God. We're going to worship you, Lord God. Come, come to the altar. Come to the place that God has got you. Come, come. Ready to bless the Lord? Yeah. Bless the Lord, oh my one. Bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, oh you his angels. And let all the earth sing. 
sing for this praise day. Come on, come on. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh mighty one. Bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, oh you his angels. And let all the earth sing forth his praise. Come on, come on. For the Lord, for the Lord delights in showing mercy. 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 Body's moving. Here we go. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. Come on, let's dance. Let's sing our freedom. Hallelujah. Strongholds. Strongholds are coming down. Jesus is lifted high. 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 I move my body when I move my body when I move my feet when I open my mouth then the darkness flees when I move my body when I move my feet when I open my mouth then the darkness flees when I move my body when I move my feet when I open my mouth then the darkness flees when I move my body when I move my feet when I open my mouth and the darkness flees. In the darkness flees. Jesus, we lift it high. 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 Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus 
house is lifted high. Hallelujah! Yes, Lord, we lift high. You know, family, look. Right here, we come here and we gather together. Right here, it doesn't cost nothing. It's not going to... It's not going to cost you nothing to enter in. It's not going to cost you nothing to come up here and receive because the presence of God is already here. When we leave this place, we're going to have to fight and maintain the presence of God in our lives. We're going to have to maintain the Holy Spirit within ourselves. So come forth. For those of you that are out there, come forth. Come and receive what you, we didn't just come to eat food. We didn't just come to talk to each other. We came for an impartation. We came for a touch of God. So come receive. Come receive what you came for. This is the Lord. Hallelujah. The weapon. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God, oh my God, will never fail. No, my God, will never fail. Right now, right now I see a victory. Right now I see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Right now. Right now I see a victory, right now I see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, oh. Yes, Lord, it belongs to you. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone you wait. I'm not backing down from any desire. I know how this story ends. And I know how this story ends. Right now, right now, I see a victory. Right now, I see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Right now, I see a victory. Right now, I see a victory. The battle belongs right now. Lord. Right now, I see a big right now. Right now, I see a big right now. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Right now, right now, I see a big right now. Right now, I see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord.
the throne And the train of His robe fills the temple Holy is the Lord I am lifted up Seated on the throne
Everybody lift your hands up. Right where you're at, lift your hands up. You're, we're, we're here to surrender to the spirit and the love of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we come to you, Father God, with open arms, Father, and open hearts, Father God. Have your way and have your say in our lives, Father, today and forevermore, Father God. Circumcise our hearts, Father, in our ears, Father, that we would be keen to your spirit, to your presence, Father, that as the word goes forth, Father, it would search the innermost parts of our heart, Father God. And anything we might have came in with, Father God, that would hinder us from receiving your word, we release it right now in the name of Jesus. We lay it at the altar, Father. We lay it at your feet, Father God, our wives, our co-workers, every situation, every circumstance, Father. We lay it down, Father God. Thank you for the word that, would, that is coming forth, Father God. May it speak to each and every one of us. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. You guys may take your seats. Thank you. So we're going to welcome up this brother right now. This brother, you know, um, I'm going to keep it real because there's nothing but men in this house, right? Sometimes this brother right here, he uh, sharpens me. It's a good word. He'll chip at something and, you know some things that I need to work on in my life, when this brother comes around, it affects me some type of way. So that's the Lord telling me, hey, you got some work needing to be done in Thomas's life. But uh, uh, this brother right here helps me in so many ways he doesn't even know. He, he's, he has so much wisdom beyond his years. And uh, I love it. I love this brother because he imparts so much into me. And I might not show it at times, bro. But it's, you impart so much into my life, and it helps me to become a better father, a better husband, a better brother to my brothers in Christ, and just a better man. And I want you to know that if I don't tell you that all the time, you help make me better, brother. And I want you to know that. I want you guys to stand up for this, brother, a mighty man of God, Brother Ryan Eldridge. Amen. Put your hands together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give God glory, right? Let's give God glory. It never stops. This is how we live. Am I on? Am I on? Praise the Lord. It never stops. That's what we do. We give God glory. Amen? He who dwells in the secret place of the most high God, not just any God, not that there's many gods, there's only one high God. And we dwell in that secret place here at Turning Point Fellowship. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, somebody. If it stopped right there, that would be enough for me. That would be enough for this man right here. If there was nothing more to it than to be right there, Ted, that would be enough for me. In that secret place. Amen? Amen? Let's greet each other. Let's say hello to somebody. Hug on somebody. Love on somebody. And we're going to get into this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're family here. We need one another. We can't do this thing alone. Right, Raul? We can't do this thing alone, family. God has never set it up like that. That's not the way it is. Carlos, we love you. Love you too, God has not set it up like that. 
We need one another to do this thing called life in the name of Jesus. Amen. We need one another. We need to sharpen one another. We need to love on one another. We need one another. Family. We are family. We are the body of Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. If we could put up 1 Corinthians 1 9, please, and we'll have a seat in just a minute, okay, my brothers? I don't know about y'all, but I need some exercise. <laughs> Come on, we all need some exercise. 1 Corinthians 1 9. It says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. I personally thank you for this opportunity, Father, that you bless me to be able to speak into men's lives, Lord. Today, the only difference is, is I have a microphone. You can hear my voice over a speaker. That's the difference today. That's all. No difference from anybody else here. We're just all servants. Amen? We're servants to you, my Lord, first and foremost. And as we do this, we, we just desire to serve one another, my Lord. It just comes naturally because our heart is for you. Lord, I ask that you open up the minds here today, Father. And I ask that you open up their hearts, my Lord. Open up their hearts to hear from you, Father. Just put me aside, Lord. You know I love to just be on the side, Father God. Have your way through my lips this morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, move amongst your sons. Move amongst the leaders. Move amongst these men of a higher standard. Speak to them individually and on a whole. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says amen. Amen. And, and everybody may have a seat. Thank you so much. You know, I'm not too sure about you men, but for me, when I finally realized that God Almighty wanted me to partner with his son, Jesus, that he wanted to fellowship with me, <laughs> I straight up didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to act. You're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He wants to spend time with me. He desires to fellowship with me. You know what? He even wants to know what my day is going. How's my day going? <laughs> he wants to know how my day is going. When, when I'm out there working hard, when we're putting in pipe, whatever the case is, when you're out there, he desires to hear from you, man. He wants to fellowship with you. Amen? That's what it says. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word fellowship is derived from a Greek word, okay? Koinonia. And it can be defined as holding something in common. Fellowship. Holding something in common. How many of you here have something in common with the man next to you? Amen. Right? We got something in common. We serve the same God. We're submitted to the same king. Amen? Amen. So we have something in common, right? And we fellowship. So that's what we're doing today. Amen? Let's go to Acts 2.42. Acts 2.42. And it may seem just right this few minutes that I got it together. <laughs> it might look like I got it together. My shirt might be kind of nice or whatever the case is. But my legs are shaking. My legs are shaking because we're in the presence of a king. Because he allowed us to come into his presence this morning. He allowed us to come into his house to worship him. And to me, that's just over the top. I can't even explain how grateful I am to give God glory this morning. Acts 2.42 says this. And they continued steadfastly. 
in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Does that sound like something that went on this morning and is continuing now, family, right? That's what we do. That's what fellowship is. We break bread. In the Acts church, in the old church, they used to go from house to house to house. It's like a whole hill was lit up. They were breaking bread with one another. They were loving on one another. They were encouraging one another. They were uplifting one another. They were praying for one another. They were believing God for one another. Everything was for one another. No man came in trying to figure out how he could figure out what's good for him and got, and got on. You understand? He didn't come to get something and this took off. No, they prayed. They did life together. Amen? Kingdom business. Come on, somebody. Verse 44. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Now, we just learned that fellowship is having things in common, right? So that's what we do. We don't, we don't meet here once a month. Mm. This is not just a once a month thing, family. I'm raising my hand. This is not a once in a month thing. I want you to know, everybody that's here, you're welcome to join us next month because we do it once a month, the first Saturday of every month. You're welcome to join us. But I'm a little bit concerned about what's going to happen from then, from now till then. That's where my concern lies this morning. Because my heart is after Jesus. My heart is the heart of Christ. So I use that word concern because that's my heart. That's who we are as Christians. That's our heart. Right, Brother Bert? Praise the Lord. As Christians were called into this fellowship of his own son, Jesus. So I want to share this with you. He never intended on saving us. He never intended on saving us and then meeting up with us in eternity. That was not the plan. That is not the plan to save you. And then I'll, I'll hook up with you when uh, you pass here on earth and you perish right? And to your dust, you will return. No, it's not about getting saved and then meeting up with him again in eternity. That's not what he's designed for us, family. He's given us very clear instructions on what he desires from us. And he gives us these instructions to better our lives. He's not a God like we are as a man, he doesn't do something expecting something in return. He doesn't operate like that. He just wants to pour out on us. So he wants to fellowship with us. He desires to hear from you individually, Art, Junior. He desires to hear from you, brother. Amen? Okay. Help me out, Lord. Here we go. We're continuing on here, family. Okay, listen. And I wrote it three times here. So I'm going to say it three times. Listen, listen, listen. Slow to, quick to, okay. This is really important. This is what I believe with all my heart. As a son of God, there's no coincidences. We don't serve a God of coincidence. I'll just give you one example. Judas did what he did because that was his assigned uh, purpose in life. So that Jesus could go to the cross and die for all the messes that we've made. To clean all that up. To clean the, a, a, a clean slate. Okay? And to heal us. I don't know how many people here are, are believing God for healing. But, but that's already been done. Over 2,000 years ago, that's already been done. It's okay to say Amen. Help a brother out. Come on, somebody. That's already been done. See, this, 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 this beautiful God that we serve, people say they don't believe in. They don't believe in him. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. I hear it, okay? Yet they still talk about him. Over 8,000, something happened over 2,000 years ago 
over 8,000 miles away, and people are still talking about it today. They're still talking about the God that you and I serve today. He's a real God. We serve a sovereign God. A sovereign God, God, excuse me, rules over his creation. My God, he's so sovereign. Mm. God's going to do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it, who he wants to do it to, who he wants to do it through. That's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. We could hold back. We could sit in the back. We could keep our hands by our sides. We may never even come to the altar. I'm not too sure. But God is going to do what he wants to do to who he wants to do it and through who he wants to do it through. And that will never stop. This is what the Lord has put on my heart this morning. The man of God is in the house today. He's looking at me. He's telling me to pull my pants up. He didn't say it. But I know. <laughs> Pull your pants up, little brother. What are you doing? So I pulled them up for the camera. YouTube world, we're glad you joined us this morning. Facebook land, good to have you. The man of God is in the house today because of the faithful God that we serve. We're going to break out in some praise right now in just a second. But hold on to it. For the grateful and faithful, he's a man of gratitude He's a man who walks with an attitude of gratitude. He's a man who knows about what it means to be steadfast. He's a man that pours his life out for his sheep. He pours his life out for this family right here. And for those of you that are not here this morning. For those of you that are not here this morning. He pours his life out for you. For you. On his back. He pours his life out for you because he loves Jesus and his heart is one with the Lord. That's our pastor. God is doing something very specific right here in our house. Very specifically on purpose with a purpose. That's how we're supposed to live as, as well. On purpose with a purpose. Very specifically what has happened our pastor has been removed for a minute, for a short time. He's been removed, okay? Because God's doing a work in him. God's doing a work spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, in every other way that you could possibly think of. God is renewing his life. He's renewing his life because of the heart that he carries. This is really important for us. I, I believe this with everything. Thank you, Father. He was removed for a period because God wants, desires, needs for kingdom business to take us men to another level. Amen. To another level. Listen to this. This is what it is. If we always have a man to run to, will we ever call on God? Will we ever spend time alone with the Father? If Brother Ryan always answers his phone, then what? Then what? Then we don't get with God sometimes, my brothers. God wants us to have relationship with him. This is a partnership. This is a vertical partnership. Vertical partnership. And he wants to take this body of Christ to another level. Individually and corporately, Pastor Joe. And he's doing it. Don't get me wrong. He's doing it in each and every one of us. Please. Please, I'm pleading with you this morning, man. Learn how to go to the source. I'm not saying don't call me. Please call me. I love it. 
I'm, I'm a servant of the Lord. I love Christ. You know, I love pouring into your lives. But go to the source. He wants you to go straight to him, Tino. You know? He wants us to go straight to him. He is our God. Amen. Amen. He created you, Mr. Salas. Right. You know, you think after all these years, you know who you are. You're still going to learn more Amen. about who you are, sir. Amen. From God. Amen. But we have to go to the source. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Can we put it up in the New Living Translation? Same scripture. It says here in the New Living Translation that we've been invited into a partnership with his son. Right? You see that there? Everybody can see that? So in the New King James, it's fellowship. Here is a partnership. Similar, but a little bit different. Right? Right? See, we can come and fellowship with one another. We're good. We're good at that, right, Brother Ralph? We're good. We're, we, we know how to break bread. We know how to love on a brother. We know how to fellowship with one another. But, but it says here about a partnership. He wants a partnership with us. He wants to partner up with you and I, Renee. He wants to partner up with us individually. Okay? Now, I don't know how many men here are married, but all you married men know what a partnership is, right? And in partnership, there needs to be what? If there's one thing on the top of your head right now, go ahead and yell it out. Give and take is good. <laughs> listening. Very good, Brother Ted. Communication, give and take, listening. Anything else? Compromise? Respect, sacrifice? Patience, love, trust. Very good, Ralph. Thank you. So everything that just came out of your mouth is what he wants you to do at home a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Because that came straight from the heart. I mean, from the heart. And through the heart flows the issues of life. The abundance of the heart speaks. You see how good he is to us? The answers are in us, family. They've been hidden in our hearts. Let's go forward. It's also a bit uh, like a business partnership as well. And in business, you own things together. Amen? Anybody who have a business, if you have a partner, you own things together. It's a mutual ownership of a business. Say there's two men that own a business. You own things together. I happen to own a, a few things only because of the Lord. Not because of my actions, not because I've been a great guy and all this stuff. No, no, no. All God. I own a home. I own a home, but I'm in a partnership with the king. I'm in a partnership with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I own a home. Guess what? That home is whose? You spoke about a lighthouse. That home is his. The day that I decide I want to close my door and not allow ministry to come through the door, not allow my brothers and families to come in and break bread and fellowship with one another, the day I do that, I break covenant. That's it. I make a decision to separate myself because we have a partnership. If I'm not praying for, for others in my home, what am I doing? I'm just existing. Oh, look at my home. Let me go lay down and come on. We're going to another level, family, and we can't get there alone. Amen? We have an automobile. That automobile is a partnership between you and who? 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 Father, he's going to convict me right now because I didn't bring anybody here this morning. But he's giving us an automobile to pick some brothers up. Amen? There are some brothers that might not have a car or may just need to be encouraged. And there's going to be nothing more exciting to see Brother Eddie pill up, pick him up, and bring him to the house of God. Do you know what that does inside of a brother's heart? Do you know what that does? could change his life forever. One small decision. 
taking that extra half an hour. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So we're in a partnership. Deuteronomy 10, 20. Thank you, Father. Oh, it's up there. I'm going to use that. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him, and to him you shall hold fast and take oaths in his name. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. That's what to fear the Lord means, Brother Carlos. That's what it means. It's not, we don't run around scared. We're covered. We discussed that already in Psalm 91, right? He who dwells in the sacred place is covered by the, the, the Almighty God, right? We're protected. So we're not running around scared like, oh, my God, it's God. No, it's the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. That's what to fear the Lord means. The Bible says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments. The man who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments. All I want to do this morning is give you some promises. Because we're, we're about to close out a year here. We're about to close out 2022. And we're going to walk into a new year, a new year, Mr. Kizala. Right? We're going into a new year. So I want to give you some promises of God. Right? I want to help you out here. Deuteronomy 30, 20, please. Oh, you guys are fast. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. Another word there. Cling to him. For he is your life, the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to you and your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. This is a promise that as we obey the voice of the Lord our God, and as we fear the Lord, that the length, the length, excuse me, of our days will be plenty. This is a promise. We're, we're actually promised 120 years, family. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Word of God says. We're promised 120 years here on earth. But it's what we do to our bodies and how we live our lives that's going to make up that difference. You know, because we hear about people going at 80 or 90 or whatnot. But, but we have been promised by the Word of God to live 120 years. Okay? But we mistreat our bodies, right? We eat what we want, when we want, when we want to eat it. Another word for cling in the Bible is hold fast. And it tells us to hold fast to him and to firmly embrace him, to firmly embrace him, firmly embrace the Lord your God. We're talking about a direct connect. We're talking about intentional uh, uh, relationship. Amen. When I was a kid, I had a little R2-D2. <laughs> I don't know about R2-D2s. I had a little R2-D2 about that big, right? And it was a little remote control. We didn't get, I didn't get gifts like that. That actually made noise. It moved. We didn't get that kind of stuff, okay? So I have a little remote control, and it'll go around the kitchen. The head will turn. The, it'll light up and everything. It's R2-D2. Yeah, it was pretty good, Pastor. <laughs> if you guys saw it now, you probably want it, right? Yeah. Probably worth a lot of money. But I had a little R2-D2 that I clung to as a little boy. Like, I wasn't going to break it. It was important to me. Even as a kid, even as a child, not knowing any better, I knew well enough that I did not want to break this toy. I, I, I clung to it. I held fast to my little R2-D2. And when I laid down on my bed at night, my little R2-D2 was there in between my dresser and my bed. You know, I'll see you in the morning. No, I didn't talk to him like that, but... But I, yeah, you did, Pastor said. I didn't, but oh, I didn't talk to him. See you in the morning. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. But I clung to him. That was my little R2T2. Excuse me, that was my little buddy. I could play with him in the morning. He was always there, right? So I clung to him, right? Some of you guys may have did that like in junior high. I don't know how many are still clinging to their wives now. But I know in junior high, maybe that took place in our life. Right? And we cling, we cling to our wives, right? Coming soon, Anthony. Coming soon. Jesus' name. We cling to our wives, right? And we don't let go, right? God wants us to do that with him. God wants us to cling to him. He's the source, amen? He's the one that provides everything for us. Let's go forward. Hold on and don't let go. Everybody stand up, please, if you can and if you're able. Stand up. A little bit quicker. A little bit quicker. No, I'm just kidding, you guys. 
I want you to look at the guy. I'm just kidding. Grab, grab a hold of the man's hand next to you. Grab a hold of his hand. We got a lot of strong men here. Love you, Pastor. We got a, strong, a lot of strong men. I want you, only just one, just two guys holding on. And I want you to pull in the opposite direction. Don't hurt a brother, but pull in the opposite. Go ahead. Come on, man. Pull. Hold fast. Pull in the opposite direction. Pull. Pull. We're holding on. You're t- yeah, take it easy on it. Yeah, there you go. Hey, we're holding on, right? We're holding fast. We're holding on. We're not letting go. Right? We're holding on. That's our brother. Right? We need to hold on. Amen? Go ahead. Let go. Be nice now. Like pastor says, be nice. That's God. God wants us to hold on and not let go. Joshua 23, 8 through 11, please. Reads like this. But you shall hold fast to the Lord, your God, as you have done to this day. For the Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations. But as for you, no one has been able to stand against you to this day. To this day, nobody's been able to stand against you. That's being covered by the by the king. Right. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you. He has promised you that he will fight for you. He will fight for you. We don't have to no longer fight. All we need to do is submit and surrender. That's it. And he's going to fight our fights. Amen. Therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God. Amen. That's the word of God, and I'm excited about it. That's all we got to do. Praise the Lord. Victory always follows those that follow God. I see one man. Yeah, one got excited. Pastor says, I love it. Pastor's back in the house, family. You understand? Covers are going to start getting pulled. Come on, somebody. I see two men, maybe three men that are taking notes. We'll go forward. I praise the Lord because we're all adults, right? <laughs> Mr. Brown, you like that? I, I praise the Lord because we're all adults. You know, I, I know the Lord has really kind of me because I'm on a, under a different mantle now. The Lord has really settled me. He's really settled me, Brother Andy. And that's because of the mantle that I sit under now. Under this house of God, under this man of God. And uh, victory always, I'm just going to continue on. Victory always follows those that follow God. Victory always follows those that follow God. Finish, stamp, period, explanation point, done. I don't know what's going on in your lives, not all of you, okay? But victory follows those that follow God. All we need to do is do what? That's the microphone. Yeah. Follow God. Praise the Lord. As you follow God, victory follows you. Choose this day who you will serve. That's what the Bible says. Choose this day. Not tomorrow. Not in a few weeks. Not after I get my affairs in order. Not after I get my home. Not after I get married. Not after I get clean. Not after I get clean. I came to this altar. No, in this house, no. But I came to many altars. Spun. Spun. Yes, he's back. Spun. 
shooting dope. Okay? Not twiddling a little pipe then. Shooting dope and pipe, whatever I could do it, whenever I could do it. You understand? You know what? I used to hold fast to that. I used to, yes. I used to cling to that. I used to hoop it. For those of you who know about the hoop. Right? It sounds, it sounds disgusting. It's dirty. It's rotten. It's filthy. But I knew if I kept coming to this altar, if I kept coming, Carlos, to the house of God, God will deliver me. God will deliver me. I will be delivered. I will have peace. I will be free. I will be able to walk forward in the name of Jesus. I will be able to fulfill the purpose of God on my life. I will be able to lift my hands in joy of the Lord. I just had to keep coming. I had to be slow too and quick too. There's men here that have been through some things in life, family. We need to be slow too and quick too. Yes, sir. With all your heart, not just when. Oh, continue on. If I asked you men today, how many of you believe God and his word? At least 90% of the people here today would raise their hand. How many of you believe God in his word? I believe about at least 90% of the people here would raise your hand. And if uh, Jesus was here today, right now, standing right here, he is, yes, sir. But if we could visually see him, okay, visually see him, he's right here. If he's standing right here next to me, oh, Father, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And he told you to stand up. And he said, be a man of honor. And he's standing here and he's telling you, take your rightful place in your home. Be men of a higher standard. Every day. Not just once a month. If he said, be humble. Humble yourself in the sight of the king. Those that humble themselves will be exalted. And those that exalt themselves will be humbled. Honor follows humility. So if the king of king was right here and you could see him just like all his boys did, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, okay? He's right here. And he told you to do those things. Would you do it? Come on, men. Engage with me. Would you do it? Would you do it over here? You would do it, okay? So here's my question. Well, guess what the Bible says? That he is the living word. Amen. He is the living word. And you may be seated. Thank you. He is the living word. So when the Bible tells us to do something, are we quick to obey? Are we quick to obey? But if he was here, you'd be on it. What, what, what did you say? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to go now. Whatever it is. Did you say forgive her? I'm going to go now and do that. Did you say love on her? Did you say wrap your arms around your, my wife? I'm going to do that. Did you say call that brother? I'm going to call him. Did you say to be there early and help these men? who labor heavy in the house of God, I'm going to do it. If he was here with us today, you would do it. Amen. He is the living word. Amen. The Bible says he is the living word. Hallelujah. The way God speaks to us is through his word in intimate relationship with him. Through his word in intimate relationship with him. Intimate relationship. Let me just share this. Intimacy with Christ 
always precedes activity for Christ. Always. Intimacy with Christ always precedes activity for Christ. And look, look, men, we know who we are as men. We're the fixers. We're the ones that can get it done, right? Amen. We can get it done. Amen. So if you don't have an intimate relationship with him, who's speaking to you? Who is speaking to you? Who is speaking into your life? He says, Jesus is the way. He goes before us. He's the way maker. If you do not have an intimate relationship with him, who is speaking to you? Who's leading your home? Who's running your companies? How do you know how to lead your children? How do you know what to do when your brother's down and out? How do you know how to encourage him, uplift him, and pray for him? How do you know how to love on your wife? Hmm. It's okay. We get quiet sometimes. <laughs> it happens. Number two. I didn't even tell you what number one is, but that's all right. It was in there. Number two, when we cling to the Lord, it's a sign of dependency upon him. All the time. Come on, pastor. It's a sign of dependency. That's how much I have left? That's funny because I'm only on page four. I got ten pages. <laughs> it's a sign of dependency. When we, when we were up at the mountaintop Saturday morning, I only slept like maybe three hours on Friday night. Praise the Lord because we were fellowshipping. And it was about the Bible. We were talking about who's your favorite football team, you know, basketball, any of that. It was about the word of God. And it was about men taking their rightful place. So I slept for about three hours, and I went into the sanctuary early, you know, to pray. And as I was praying, uh, uh, I, I saw my, my folder, and the Lord had me write something down. And he told me, I don't need you to whistle through the clouds. I just need you to remain weak and dependent upon me. That was for me. I don't need you to be able to whistle through the clouds. I just need you to remain weak and dependent upon me. Change my life. Change my life. Of course, I got a lot more, but, but that was something individually for me. When you cling to the Lord, it's a sign of dependency to him. We're talking about an attitude of gratitude. We're talking about being dependent on the God. It's a sign of humility. It's a sign of humility. I know, I know the majority of you men in here can make some things happen. It's just who you are. It's the way the Lord created you. We're men. We can make some things happen. Amen? Amen? Some have degrees. Some have plenty of education, as well as many of you. Many of you have experience in different areas. And I understand that. I understand that you men can make some things happen. As a matter of fact, some of you in here can even get rich without God. can make a lot of money without God. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Believe me, there's millionaires, billionaires out there that have no kind of relationship with the Father. They don't, mean, they don't even understand what that means. Okay? And I know there's many of men here that can do this and, and live maybe even what, what they would believe to be a successful life without God. You can get married. You can have children. You can raise children. You can do all of that without God. It happens every day all around us. Amen? Amen. 
But let me tell you what happens. You will burn out. You will dry up. And it will come with sorrow. That's the word of God. It will come with sorrow. But God says, come to me, be dependent upon me, and I'm going to give you the grace. It's not by your power. It's not by your will. I'm going to give you the grace and the ability to get that job done. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. We're talking about the grace of God. Amen. Say more grace. More grace, more grace Lord. More, grace. more mercy. More mercy. Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am the Lord your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He's the one who strengthens us. He's the one who's going to help us. He's going to give us the wisdom. He's going to download the strategies for our companies. We can't hold on to the things of God and the things of the world. At the same time, no more. We just can't do it. We're never going to go forward if we have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. We need to take a stand. We need to remain steadfast. Amen? We can't be double-minded. We can't be in faith and fear simultaneously. At the same time, it doesn't work like that. That's it. No more worrying and much more praying and thanking God. We are men of a higher standard. It's no longer one day yes in the faith and one day no. It's no longer uh, uh, one day fearful and one day faith. 41.10 says that fear not, right? Fear not. What is it, family? What gets us men worried? Why is it that we become nervous and uneasy? Why is it that the same temptations the devil gave us on Thursday night, we wake up with it on Friday morning? Come on. Come on. Help me understand. Help me understand. Psalms 2713, please. Reads like this. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to make a declaration this morning, men. No longer will we lose heart. No longer will we as men give up and quit when times get tough. No longer will we throw in the towel. No longer will we come and go depending upon the season that God has us in. No longer will we go around the same mountain again and again. Come on, somebody. God, I'm not a preacher. I'm a reacher. I want to reach deep. I want to reach deep as God uses me to reach deep. He wants to reach deeply into our hearts. He desires relationship, family. So no longer are we going to go around that same mountain again and again. No longer will we look back at what was, yet rather we remain focused on who is. No more looking back on what was, family, but remain focused on who he is. Amen? 1 Corinthians 5.17 says, Behold, check it out. All things have become new. We are a new creation. It's a scripture that probably the majority of you people in here, men of God in here, know it. We are a new creation. Amen? Amen? Raise your hand if you're a new creation. All right. Praise the Lord. No longer will we carry. Listen to this. It's, enough is enough, says the Lord. That's it. Enough is enough. I, I hear it all the time. I'm tired. I'm tired. And I was there, sick and tired of being sick and tired. Listen. 
We are a new creation. All those things have passed. The Lord has forgiven you. Okay? Now we need to walk in the newness of Christ. Listen, no longer carrying your shovels around with you. You got a shovel over your shoulder, and we call ourselves Christian. We have the shovel over our shoulder, so when things get rough, we dig them up. We dig up that old man his that's been dead and buried. He's dead. He's dead. I had a conversation already with my wife recently. I said, I don't really remember that. Honestly. I said, but if you could show me some paperwork to remind me, I guess. Otherwise, I don't remember. That man is dead. I don't, I don't have enough time here. The time is coming, family. I, I, it's like the Lord is peeping through the clouds on us now. He's right here. He's, he's right around the corner. I don't have time to dig that old brother up no more, Juan. I don't. So I got rid of my shovel. And I want to encourage you men to get rid of yours. Right? There's so much going on in the house of God and in your lives that you can testify beyond measure. We don't need to talk about that old man anymore. Let him lie. Let him die. Let him lie. Let him die. Amen? I say no to that dead dummy. <laughs> That's what I say. I say no to that dead dummy. I have to do that daily. No. No. Are you kidding me? Shut your mouth. Matter of fact, I don't even understand how I can hear him when he's already six feet deep. Possibly my mind needs to be renewed. Through the reading of the word, through the washing of the word, and through intimate relationship with the Father. That's how our mind is going to be renewed, family. It's not a bunch of self-will tapes or anything like that. It's not a, a, just about another encouraging sermon. It's about reading the word of God and meditating upon it. Okay? The Bible says to meditate upon the word day and night. Let's pull up Isaiah 40, 30, 40 31, please. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall walk and not faint. You guys all know that scripture. But I just got this little warning back here of how many minutes I got left. So I'm going to go to Proverbs 24.10 in the Message Bible. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. If you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. My God, sharper than a double-edged sword. Whoo, sharper than a double-edged sword. If you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. There wasn't much to you in the first place. We have to open the book. Like Pastor always says, it's an open book test. Yes, sir. It's an open book test. Make time to get with your father. He's the one that guides you. He's the one that protects you. He's the one that provides for you. I know it seems like, no, I'm the one. I'm making this happen. No, God is. God is doing it. God is doing it because of his love for you. Even when we're far off. Even when we don't acknowledge him. Even when we wake up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and just go to work. And on Friday we say, oh, good morning, pops. He still provides for you. Because you made a decision to receive him into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior at one point in your life. And the Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. But he longs to hear from you. He desires fellowship with you. He desire, excuse me, desires intimacy with you. Thank you, Father. It's time now, like Abraham... We need to be strengthened in the word of God. 
We need to stand on that promise. You see, Abraham was a man who didn't have a Bible. He didn't have YouTube. He didn't have brothers of of faith and courage all surrounding him like a stone wall. He didn't have that. As a matter of fact, God said, leave your house. Leave your house and come to me. Follow me. He didn't have brothers encourage him. He didn't have none of that stuff. He didn't have this. He didn't have the word of God. All he had was a promise, the father of faith. He stood on the promise from God. He didn't waver in his faith. Just like us men, we need to stand on the word of God and not waver in our faith. The winds may come and the troubles of life will hit us. Yet like a tree, we may bend, yet we won't break. We just sway. It only takes one word of God, men. Yet we need to read our Bibles in order to get it. It only takes one word of God, man, but we need to read the instructions in order to get it. We need to diligently obey the voice of the Lord our God. Amen? Amen. How can we know direction if we are not in contact with him who directs us? How can we know direction if we're not in contact with him who directs us? Right? Right? Think about that. That's good stuff. I love that. Romans 4, 20 and 21, please. Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and he was fully convinced. He was fully convinced. There wasn't a doubt in his mind that he heard from God and he was going to do what God said. He did it. That's faith. God spoke and he, and he walked. He took the step forward. That's faith. That's what we're walking. Amen? Okay, praise God. He was giving glory to God and he was fully convinced. So he was giving glory to God, praising him, worshiping him, calling out his name, exalting him, giving him glory as we were created to do. Amen? And he was fully convinced that God was able to do whatever he promises. Just like Abraham, we're going to make a fresh commitment before the Lord today. As this year is coming to an end, my brothers. Some of your tanks may be dry. You're like, wait a minute, we just came back from the mountaintop. How could my tank be dry when we just spent three days and presence of God. Right? How long ago was that? Have you gotten with him since? Have you separated yourself since the mountaintop? Have you had a mountaintop experience in your home? In your yard? Have you danced down your hallway onto the restroom praising the Lord? intimate relationship this is step one as well as one of the highest callings of our lives is to have fellowship with God step one everybody wants to know what step two three and four have for them but we don't want to we don't want to do what the first step requires of us does that make sense just like anything else, as you raise your children, those of you men that are here that have raised children, what's the first thing that a baby does, learns to do, or just does? Anybody got kids in here? <laughs> Cries, okay, anything else? Crawls, got to crawl before you walk. Anything else? Eats. Even a baby knows, ooh, I'm hungry. Even a baby, meh. He's on that teta. Right? Even a baby knows that he's hungry. 
right? How much more should we realize when we get hungry, when our tank is dry, when it just doesn't seem like God is with us? Where's the brothers at? I don't even hear from the brothers anymore. I come to church and the brothers just seem distant and all that stuff. Those are all lies from the enemy. And it's just because your tank is a little bit dry. It's not because you're a bad guy. It's not because you're missing it. It's just because you're not walking in it. You're not walking in it. You're not setting time apart. See, God sanctified us, right? Am I right? Sanctified us. But it's up to us to concentrate ourselves, to be consecrated, to be set apart. He did it in the mother's room, in our mother's room. He said he knew us before we were in our mother's room, right? But we have to set, our part, set ourselves apart every day, in everyday life. We have to pull ourselves to the side. We have to say no to the agenda because I got to get with my father. Why? Because I need direction. I need to know how to go about this. Do you understand? Look at, we're all here in the house of God, not because we had it all figured out. Come on. And then you get some word in you and you got like 20 years under your belt and, and you think it's all. We have to set ourselves apart every single day and get with the Lord because he's going to direct our steps. He goes before us, but he's going to show us the way because he's the way maker. So we need to do this daily. Okay, family? Focus your attention on me for I am good and I am faithful. And I am the I am. It's time. It's time now, today, to fully submit and surrender your lives to Jesus Christ. How much time do I have? None. <laughs> Thank you, Father. So, so I made a declaration over our lives today, family, in the name of Jesus, okay? And it's time to set ourselves apart. It's up to us. It's not our wife. She's not the one that's got to pull us aside and say, bro, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you prayed? Christian, you're a Christian? I don't ever want to hear that out of my wife's mouth again. Soy un cristiano? Este es un cristiano? Este es un cristiano? Huh? Hermano? Este es un cristiano? I don't ever want to hear that out of my wife's mouth again. In the name of Jesus. So therefore, I'm going to set myself apart. And I'm going to lean not on my own understanding. I'm going to draw close to him as he draws close to us. Amen. Yes. Fellowship with your God. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, I got the mic. Praise God. Um, thank you, Brother Ryan. Powerful word. Companionship. I got companionship, standing firm, fellowship, setting myself apart. Amen. So I just want to thank you for that. Let's give him another round of applause, please. Because you got to study. You have to study, study, study. Get along with God for that. So, um... Before we pray out and go forward with our day, uh, there's a little something we do here at Turning Point Fellowship, and we like to continue it. And um, if it's your birthday on the day, whether we have a, a, a men's meeting or on a, a service Sunday or a Thursday, we bring you up and we sing happy birthday to you. So i like to bring up my brother, Renee. Today's his birthday. We're going to sing happy birthday to him because we celebrate you here at Turning Point Fellowship. We don't tolerate you. We celebrate you. Amen. So we just want to celebrate him. Uh, how old are you, brother? 21. So on the count of three, we're going to sing happy birthday to Brother Renee. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Renee. Happy birthday to many more. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, brother. 
So, Father, we come before you and we just thank you for the word that was delivered today. Father God, I pray, I know, Lord God, that it fell on good and fertile ground, Father. I pray that we would toil and work that ground and work that word, Father God, to our favor, Father God, and for our benefit and the benefit of our families, Father God. I thank you for every man, every household that is represented here today, Father God. Father, I pray that the peace, the word, Father God, and the power that you've imparted into them today, Father God, when they leave with it, Father, they will not let it go, Father God, that they would not let it go, Father. So I just thank you again for Brother Ryan and for his diligence in studying your word, Father, and, and the eloquence in which he, he imparted it, Father God. So I just, we thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. There's uh, whatever's left out there, man. Uh, help yourself. There's probably coffee, juice, and whatnot. Help yourself. We have a... Uh